Hey y'all, it's your favorite on. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below to Nightcap YouTube channel so you never miss a single live stream or video of myself, Ocho, and Gil. Remember, Nightcap doesn't happen without you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thank you. Brady Cook returns from the hospital to lead number 19, the number 19 Tigers, Missouri Tigers, to a comeback win over Auburn. Cook went to the hospital for an MRI, but later returned in the third quarter with Missouri down 17-6. Cook immediately led Missouri on his first touchdown drive of the game. Redshirt freshman Jamal Roberts finished things with a four-yard scoring plunge. Excuse me, as Missouri defense stifled Auburn on fourth and 18 with less than 10 seconds left on the clock to secure the win. Cook returned, and the fact that it looks like he'll be okay moving forward is huge for the Tigers. I ain't never seen nothing like this, Ocho. Like he pulled, he pulled that Paul Pierce, huh? Wheelchair, yeah. MRI, come back in, and act a fool. Yeah. But you know how long an MRI take, huh? Yeah, I do. <laughs> I've had I've had several of these bad ass hips. Hey, man, buddy, when he got an MRI and came back and went crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I know how long it took. It reminds me of a situation. Rest his soul, Goose. Man. Sarah Goose? Yeah, man. Goose. Check this out, man. Goose. Uh -huh. We playing in Baltimore. Yeah. And I know the fans of Baltimore know y'all remember this. Man, Goose got hit. Goose can't move. Goose can't move. So they come out there. They put a board up on his big ass and get him <laughs> out the field. <laughs> and get him out the field. Goose leaving the ambulance. Right. Wait, he left in the ambulance? Next thing you know, Goose come running back out on the field. <laughs> I said, man. <laughs> man, I said, come on, man. Man. Hey, what, hey, what was wrong with him? Nothing. <laughs> he probably had to go to the bathroom. Hey, but well, that's funny, man. Goddamn Tony. Man, Goose, man, look here. Goose was always doing something. Man, they had to get Goose one time. They, uh, yeah, Lamar did that also against Cleveland. Uh, man, Goose had to go to the bathroom. Goose said, whatever yeah. you do, don't roll me over. <laughs> <laughs> man, yeah, he nah. kept, man, Goose kept some bull jive going. He, right. he really did. Man, I say, man, first of all, ain't no way in hell now especially the NFL game, right. they cart you off the field, Ocho. They're going to mm. let you come back in the game. Oh, no. <laughs> man, but the thing, man, I think about, man, I think about some of the stuff that we did that yeah. they allowed. Yeah. Ain't no way. It wouldn't Ain't work. no way they allow you to do that now. Mm -mm. Nope. Because mm -mm. I, I remember I got, I knocked myself out in the game against uh, the Patriots on a Monday uh, night. Right. Missed like two quarters. Man, they got okay. late in the ball game. They're talking about, hey, Sharp, we need you. Because they took my helmet at first. Oh, you went back in? The game got close. Hey, I'm holding three fingers up. How many fingers I got up? Three. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. You good? I went right on back. <laughs> Y'all go look it up. I went right on back out there, Ocho. Hell no. Nah. Hey. Funny. Yeah, man. But that was that was unbelievable. Uh, I'm glad everything worked out for uh, uh, Brady Cook. Yeah, Most left definitely. the game, goes and gets an MRI. Team down, comes back into the game, leads them to a victory. That was very very impressive. Arizona State coach Kenny Dillingham posted an apology on social media Saturday night for his post game criticism of kicker Ian Hershey. The kicker missed two fourth quarter kicks as the Sun Devil tried to mount a comeback against Cincinnati. Dillingham said Sunday the team would be holding kicking trials on Monday. Our kicking game is atrocious. So if you can kick and you're in Arizona and you're at Arizona State, email me, right? We're gonna have kicking trials on Monday. So bring it on. Kicking trials Monday. Let's go. Yeah, I'm dead serious. We're gonna put it out there on social media. We're gonna have a kicking trial on Monday. We're gonna find somebody who can make a field goal. Mm. Uh it makes it, it makes it even harder late in games when you're clearly a kick scenario. That's when it gets really hard because you're like, hey, it's a clearly a kick. You know, definitely you want to take the points here. There's no doubt in your mind. Dillingham later apology. I would like to apologize for my post-game press conference. I talked about our kicking game like I do offense and defense. However, 
the kicking game was already always directed at one player. I should not have done that, and I apologize. A team loses, as we always, 100% falls on myself. Sun Devil for life. Hell nah. You don't fall on no goddamn yourself. It's the kicker's fault. It's okay. It's okay to tell the truth sometimes. You have one job. <laughs> the kicker has one job. You go out there to practice. You do one thing all practice for two hours. Kick the goddamn ball. Yeah. Sometimes the game is on your shoulders. You have to kick the ball to win the game. In yep. this instance, you want to take the points? You miss field goals make to make the game closer. Maybe you might have had a chance to win at some point. You yep. never know. You got to make your kicks. That's all you do. Hell, if you don't got damn scholarship, they wasted the scholarship on you as a kicker and you're missing the goddamn kicks. If you're at the next level and you miss the kicks, you know what's going to happen to you? What that? Shit, you going to get cut? Gonna yeah, for sure. They're going uh, yeah. to gonna find somebody else that's going to make them? You know, I don't you don't you don't need to apologize for that because all this does is get that individual if he's choosing to be a kicker at the next level. This is how it's gonna be. It ain't gonna be no speech like that to the media. Ain't gonna be no speech like that. It's your stuff gonna be packed up in the goddamn locker and they're not they're not gonna let you in. Your gate code ain't gonna work at the next level. Well, you do realize like college, the scholarship is not for four years. That thing gets renewed every year. Oh yeah. Come on now. I know there are a lot of guys that came in with me. The ones that didn't leave, yeah. Uh, once we got in and started doing two days, because like I said, Ocho, we ran before practice, right? Because Coach Davis told us we had like 120 guys out there, mm-hmm. and Coach Davis said I got 60 uniforms. He said I got to trim the fat, right? He ran, boy. I couldn't go home, yeah, because I wasn't working in the field. I was done with the field job. I hey, I saw my uncles and I saw men that was 20 and 30 years older than me. Like, not, not, I'm not going to do this. I'm not right. going to be working no job, uh, making $20, $30 a day for the rest of my life with no benefits. Right. And if I don't work, I need me a salary job. Mm-hmm. Even if I don't show up, I'm going to get paid. You know, when you work no job like that, Ocho, you don't show right. up, you don't get paid. Oh, you don't get paid, yeah. It rained out, you know, hey, it rained. Oh, we can't go today. Right. I don't get no check. I ain't got no insurance. So mm-hmm. I was like, that ain't, that ain't me. I ain't leaving. Right. I ain't leaving because I knew there was nothing back home that was better than for me than what I had at Savannah State. Oh, yeah. So, but Coach Davis said, Coach Davis said, look, some of y'all ain't going to be here next year. He just said, I know what y'all going to do. Y'all going to go home and you're going to tell your mom and dad, Coach mm-hmm. Davis effed over me. But yeah. when they come in my office and say, you effed over my son, I'm going to pull the tape out and I'm going to show them. I'm going to say, see, your son effing over me. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good simple. one. Simple. Yeah. It, it's, it's really that simple. Bro, it ain't complicated, Ocho. It's not. You got a job to do, do it. That's Man, it. Man, you know, everybody ain't perfect. Okay. You need to be more perfect than not. I ain't saying you got to be perfect all the time, but yeah. you better be more perfect than not. Yeah, damn. At, at, least, at least 90%. So I don't know what y'all, I don't know what y'all want me to tell you, because this, 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 hey, either get Barney Porter, get good or get gone. You got two choices. Mm. You can get good, excuse me. You can get good or you can get gone. Yeah. Now, which one you want to do? Yeah. And especially when it comes to and when it comes to this game, there's always someone that can replace you. Name the job. Ocho. Always. Name the job that there's not somebody lined up to replace who's ever in currently in that job. Every time. Whether you're president of the United States, you're a senator, you're Mm. you're you whatever the case may be, you're a minister at a big church. I guarantee you that people lined up to get that position. Yeah. So you think as a professional athlete for a second, take professional side, name the job. There isn't a job that there isn't people lined up to replace somebody in said job. Yeah. So if you think you will get, oh man, you know what? No, nah, bro. When you making money to do something. Right. I ain't trying to hear all them damn excuses. I'm really not. Yeah. I don't, I don't think coach should apologize. If, if anything, listen, that's tough love. That's tough love. That's getting you That's getting you ready for the next level. Because there ain't going to be no apologies when you make mistakes like that in the real world. Ain't no apologies. Hell no. Ain't no, ain't no apologies. Sometimes you got one chance to mess up. Sometimes you don't have an opportunity to miss two field goals. No. Sometimes you, even get, you don't even get that chance. Oh, I, you two? Okay, boom. You gone. I, like I said, Ocho. 
when you grow up like we grew up, and I and I had to learn this because a lot of how you raise your kids is mm-hmm. how your parents or grandparents raise you. Raise you, yeah. And it was it's hard for me because, and like Coach Prime, this is why Coach Prime is a great teacher. He says because you can't see those kids as you. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't do that. My grandfather was not big on repeating himself. Mm-hmm. One time. He said, I'm not going to chew this food twice. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you're going to chew that food more than twice? Or you going to choke, try to chew some food twice and swallow it and see what happened to you. Right. But what he meant, he wasn't going to repeat himself. Right. And I remember a conversation he had with my grandmother. And she said, Barney, don't be so hard, don't be so hard on him. He's just a little fella. Mm-hmm. I was young, Ocho, but like I said, my grandfather died when I was uh, I was in 77. So I was eight years old. He died right. in February. I was gonna turn nine in uh in June. And she said, Barney, don't be so hard on him. He's just a little fella. He said, Mary, he said, I got he has to get what I'm telling him the first time. I said, he said, Mary, we live on a farm. He's gonna be around heavy machinery. He's going to be around these animals that are dangerous. He said, Mary, I might not get a second chance. I mm. need him to understand the importance of right. what I'm saying. Right. And it really, and as I got older, I understood because I see, I saw a man, Mr. Joe, Joe Tatum, who was uh, uh, the guy that we worked for. We worked for the Tatum brothers, but then they ended up splitting, splitting off. And he would always tell us, he's like, Pee Wee, my name was Pee Wee. I know y'all guys can't believe it, but I was really small as a as a young a young fella, so they called me Pee Wee. My cousin, he was named his name was Sundown. That was his nickname, Sundown, because you know he look up there and it's like, Mister Joe, it's time to get off. The sun going down, so they start they call him Sundown. But he would always tell us uh-huh. is that never come up like like the tractor at Adam had a call what they call a PTO that powered all the equipment. He says, boys. Never come up to the back of the tractor like this because something bad could happen. You ain't got to tell me something, but once something bad can happen, I'm right. good. Ocho, we're in the field one day, and I never forget dude named uh, Fred. I forget Fred's last name. Damn. He came up there the back of the PTO equipment. He had on some frayed jeans. Ah. He got caught up in that thing. You could hear it splitting his jeans. After ah. the next thing you know, Ocho, all you could do... I'm looking. I'm looking at it because it's for me to for me to this camera. I'm looking. Next thing I know, he got his he got his foot in his hand. Ah, took his foot off just like that. You see, guys in, in a grinder lose a finger. Yeah. So that's why people are like, well, Shannon, bro, bro, I just that's just the way we grew up, right? And it's it, it was hard for me. To get out of that. And I'd realize, Shannon, you can't raise your kids like you were raised because it's different. It's different. Mm-hmm. And it was hard for me to get out of that. And I was like, you know what? It took a while, though, because their mom was like, Shannon, they're kids. I said, I know they're kids. And I say, I wouldn't be as hard on them if they will stay kids forever. Mm. If they will stay between the ages of four and 10. Right. No problem. But what happens when they get 16? What happens when they get 25? So when people's like, oh, that's, oh, it's a mistake. No, no, bro. No, I ain't trying to hear all that. I'm I'm really, I'm really not Ocho. And I'm right. hard on me. I, be, I beat myself up when I do like, I make a mistake. And, and, and that's the hardest thing, Ocho, because I understand we're not perfect. Nobody's perfect. All I try to do, Ocho, is I try to I try to I try to shoot for the stars. Mm-hmm. And even if I land on the moon, I'm still pretty high up. Oh yeah, most definitely. And most that's definitely. what that, that's the hardest thing. And so I get what Coach Dillingham is saying, yeah. and I understand that. Like that's why you got to be careful, Ocho, when you're upset, because you three people to tell you the truth: yeah. kids, drunks, and angry people. When a mofo get mad at you, yeah, watch how they start talking to see how they talk about you. Tell you everything you they, want. Oh, that beat. Oh, so you think I'm a bee, huh? Tell you everything, tell you, hey, tell oh, you yeah. everything they be thinking. Every time. A drunk mind, a drunk, a drunk mouth is a sober mind's thought. Mm. 
So whatever you say, Ocho, when you drunk, you thought about when you were sober. Whatever you do while you drunk, you thought about it while you were sober. That's how it come to your consciousness. See, I like that. I don't drink, but I'm going to write that down. A drunk man. A drunk, uh, yeah. <laughs> but that's a good one there, a drunk man. I don't drink, but real, real be, real be motherfucking drinking. So next time she gets slick in the mouth, <laughs> I just know, I just know a drunk man is a sober man's thoughts. I was like, bro. So you got, Ocho, you got to be careful. You you have to be careful because a lot of times, you know what people will do? They try to they try to disguise how they truly feel in jokes. Mm. Man, I I was just man, I you man, you know I'm just playing, right? Okay, little in, little in, little envy, little envy. Mm-hmm. Okay, you play it. I don't play like that. Everybody mm-hmm. don't play the same. No, I don't. I don't play with Teddy like I play with Titus. Two different situations. Mm-hmm. Two different dogs. Right. I had a dog, Ocho. You couldn't look him in his eyes. He would bite you. He would bite you. I would have to put him up. You couldn't come through the house running. I had a dog. I had to put him up. For whatever reason, he did not like my he did not like my father. He was my stepfather, but we called him Pops. Right. We had to put him up. Because the whole while Pops was sitting on the couch, all you hear is The whole while, a two dog Kane and Kane called him Big Daddy. Big Daddy, he'd be like, <sighs> and when I say, and he know, cause soon as I say Big Daddy, let's go, he hop up and go, cause he know he he want no parts of it. Right. You couldn't walk up on me. That's how you. That's how they were. You could not walk up on me. I had a dog named uh uh, uh what was his name? His name was Samson. We called him Bo. You couldn't hug me. I could, girlfriend couldn't hug me. He would bite. He would bite you. For real? He would light their ass up. Bucket. When Bucket got ready to leave, Bucket gave me dap. I said, Bucket, you can't get. You can't dap your homeboy up. He's like, man, come. Ask Bucket. Next time you see Bucket, ask him what Bo do if you dap hug me. Oh, hell so no. everybody don't play the same. Right. 